Hello and welcome to Eyewitness Report on Channels Television. I am Jomi Otaigbe. Following some eyewitness pictures, the gruesome death of Oluwa Bameshe Anyowole takes center stage in this week's edition of the program. Also, residents and motorists flying Old Ojo Road in Oriade Local Council Development Area of Lagos State lament its deplorable state as the rainy season draws near. These and more shortly. It's been over one week since Oluwa Bamiche Anyowale was found dead. Eyewitness reports collate activities that played up in the wake of the murder of the 22-year-old fashion designer after boarding a BRT bus. <laughs> A voice note from Olua Bamishi Ayanwala to her friend, expressing her fears, immediately she sensed danger while on a bus rapid transit. The voice conversation and a corresponding short video showing the bus number are taken as evidence at the time the former was last heard. These materials were released by her friend and went viral on social media when she was declared missing. An eyewitness video also emerged showing the reaction of some family members on noticing the bus packed in the garage. While the police embarked on the search of the missing girl, her lifeless body was found nine days after, lying on the Cata Bridge in Lagos Island. Like several others, Bamiche chose not to remain idle, but to eke out a living from her trade. The 22-year-old fashion designer did not anticipate her end will come so soon when she left her place of work for home on Saturday, February 26th. Though not a BRT design bus stop, it is believed Bamiche boarded a BRT bus from Chevron Junction towards Obalende, where she was to board another to her destination, Ota in Ogun State. Presently, the Lagos Police Command has arrested 47-year-old Andrew Nice Ominini Koron, the driver of the BRT bus on which Bamiche transited. We are greeted with a banner bearing Bamiche's image upon arrival at her parents' home in Ayobo. The Morning House has been hosting sympathizers who come in trickles. In here, a visibly shattered mother is surrounded by her friends, neighbors and relatives who are apparently absorbed in thoughts of the deceased. While she can't attend to a TV interview, her husband musters some strength to do so, taking solace in his faith. Until her death, Bamiche lived with her elder sister in Ota. For years, Oluwato in Abegunde served the role of mother to her young sibling. We 
With teary eyes, Oluwa Toyin recalls memories with her late sister and what made her most admirable within the family and in the neighborhood. I've been in that hotel for past eight years now. She came to me, I think about four years or so. People that know Bamiche, eh? they didn't know me. They didn't know me. But Bamiche, they know her like, I don't know, I was like, you know, because she's a generous girl, she play with everybody, she doesn't have any me, she doesn't. In fact, people love her. That day that people heard that she's late, you need to see how people are all because of her. That's how a good girl like this just left the world just like that. She's a good girl. But you know what I want? On behalf of this Bamiche. I don't know. What is, is there any other word that is higher than solid? Is there any other word? Is there any other one that is better than good? I need good justice. I need a solid justice. I need a thorough justice for Bamish. Bamiche's death came in an unlikely manner, eliciting condemnation from individuals and groups. It's really absurd. It's barbaric in a nation where we have, we, we don't, we don't, there is no love, no, no peace, no, no, no unity. And the government should come to the head of the masses. There's so much poverty in the land. And that's why you see people venturing into evil acts. And it is total evil of the day. I'm scared of the blue variety because we don't expect it that way. Because we believe, as long as it's carrying much people, we believe such thing cannot happen. But when we had it, everybody is scared. Like, somebody like me, I'm scared. Rising from an International Women's Day event, the Lagos State Governor condemns the criminal act and commits to bringing the perpetrators of Bamiche's death to book. There's an investigation that is going on. And because the criminal activity, so it's the Nigerian police that is empowered you know, constitutionally, to fully, fully unravel, you know, all of the events that happened. And you can see that it's been condemned at the highest level in our government. I personally standing up to condemn it, right, and to, you know, um, offer condolences to the family of um, citizen, you know, um, Oluwa Bamiche. The circumstances leading to Oluwa Bamiche's death leaves so much to wonder about the safety of millions of Lagosians who patronize the Lagos bus rapid transit system, BRT. Though dead, Oluwa Bamiche has been commended for being courageous to call her friends' attention and for the intelligent use of the mobile technology amidst her fears. The incident might have further exposed the security lapses in the operation of the bus rapid transit system. The regulators and the operators of the scheme have come under public backlash for allegedly failing to put in place a functional surveillance system, especially for not installing closed circuit television cameras at terminals and in the buses, including the one boarded by Bamiche. Retired military officer and security consultant Yomi Dari weighs in on this. I don't think that this, the operations of these buses are well regulated. What am I saying? Sometimes you see these drivers driving recklessly. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. Now, let's even narrow it down to this security issue that we are talking about. I expect, first and foremost, all these buses should have CCTVs. And then all these buses should have emergency numbers displayed inside the buses and outside the buses. Inside the buses for the safety of the passengers. Outside the buses for the safety of other road users. 
is in the situation where you find a driver driving, you know, roughly, driving and conducting his or herself in, in such manner that is unacceptable, there must be numbers that you can immediately call, aside even taking the photographs of uh, such uh, occurrence or such incident. In his reaction, the Lagos State Governor debunked these allegations. No, it's not true. In all of our BRT buses that, that, were, that, that we procured two, two and a half years ago, all of them have CCTV cameras. But however, and, tracker. and trackers, however, the additional ones that we bought locally, the ones that we bought locally last year are the ones that we have not installed because you need to do a lot of configuration before you can put CCTV cameras in there. Right? And so we're speaking with the, with, the, with the manufacturer of that. You know, I don't need to mention it, but they were purchased locally. That's the unfortunate one that this particular incident you know, happened. And I think it's also important for me, because I've gotten you know, um, um, information. At the time in which these drivers close and they switch off the light, they are meant to drive back empty to their yard. Let me repeat myself. They are meant to drive back empty to their yard. Any bus that is still on service would certainly not have his lights on, so it would not have his light off. Right? And so that in itself is, is, is a litmus, or it's, it's, it's something that the citizens need to be aware of. Right? That once the light of a bus you know, is fully off, you know, once the radar is not showing where it's going to, people should desist from entering such, you know, because the conductors will have been out of it, the checkers will have been out of it, it's only the bus driver that is taking the bus to the terminal to go and park. And so we should just, you know, pass on this message, you know, and whatever additional measure that we need to put in place to ensure that all of our private operators, because these are run by private companies, all of our private operators, you know, the SLAs that are supposed to look at it again, I'm sure the company and Lamata, they'll look at the entire process and they'll see how they improve on the SLA that things like this do not repeat itself. But the state governor's explanation on the absence of CCTV in some buses is not acceptable by the security expert. In this 21st century, why would we be buying buses that don't have CCTV installed in them? And even if CCTV cameras are not installed in those buses, it behoves on whosoever has gone to buy those buses or when these buses were brought in to see that these things are are not there, and then they can still install them there. So that nothing stops them from installing. So I, I don't think that's just begging the issue. As a security consultant, Mr. Dari also proffers solutions to bolster the safety of residents who patronize public transport system. Let's go and look at the terminals, the bus terminals. Are they, are, are, are those terminals, do they have CCTVs installed there? All the various Bus, bus stops. Are CCTV cameras installed there? So this is a clarion call. This is a wake-up call that we must step up our games. And I'm not talking about just installing CCTV cameras alone. Where are they monitored? Because it's not enough for you to just install a CCTV camera. Are those cameras monitored? You must have control rooms spread across the metropolis, not just the police station alone. Control rooms where those cameras those will, will be monitored. Because if that had been the case, I bet you this girl wouldn't have just been killed by these hoodlums. There are so many of Bamishes of, uh, or, and their family outside there. A lot of crimes are not even reported and not even accounted for. That shouldn't be the case. So the more you allow these crimes to go unpunished or invest uninvestigated, unreported, the more criminals we have outside, outside there. And the more they are empowered to come to perpetuate their crimes. So we must just arrest this. Bamiche's unfortunate demise reveals that bad elements like Andrew Nice or Minin Koron still exist in our society.
He is in the custody of the police after the application for his remand was granted by the court. Investigation of the matter is ongoing, even as efforts to apprehend other suspects continue. A sad story indeed. We'll take a short break now. Eyewitness Report will be back in a moment. Welcome back. In response to the pictures of the bad state of Old Ojo Road and the continued complaints from residents and motorists, we visited affected communities in Oriade Local Council Development Area of Lagos State to find out why they think they've been abandoned by the state government. Old Ojo Road is a trunk B road of Lagos Badagri Expressway covering seven wards in Oriade Local Council Development Area of Lagos State. The road links major towns including Mazamaza, Domorose, Oluti, Agboju, Alakija, Abuleado and Abuleoshun. But Old Ojo Road offers very little in terms of accessibility as it's been so for the last decade. Built to serve as an alternative route for travelers along the Lagos Badagri Expressway who seek an exit into the old Ojo Township, it hardly serves that purpose now as motorists prefer to ply the main expressway while turning into old Ojo Road only when it is absolutely necessary. The road suffers even more from the weight of articulated trucks and tankers. <laughs> Community members have at different times put in place palliative measures in different portions of the road to bring some respite, which according to them is only temporary. The old Ojo Road is one of the oldest roads in Lagos State because it was constructed in 1974 by His Excellency Mugolaji Johnson of Blessed Memory. So over the years, this road has undergone a series of rehabilitation. But in the last six, seven years, the rehabilitation has not really had any effect. I remember we wrote to His Excellency uh, Mr. Akim Miambodi but they need to dualize this road. But he only give us his word that if he comes back, he will do it. But unfortunately, he did not, he was not re-elected. So now, as a matter of fact, we wrote to the incumbent governor, the, Mr. Babajide Sonwulu, on the need for this road to be rehabilitated, to be reconstructed and rehabilitated. So the governor, you know, replied us that they will do the needful as time goes on. But uh, unfortunately, the situation we find the road, they see what it is. We as a community development association, we have made many moves. We collaborated with uh, the CCCC, that's a Chinese construction company, whereby we, we, we cover some potholes. We go to that direction, you see some of the potholes we covered, up to the Moros and the police station. So these are what we have done. We have collaborated with FEMA. We have collaborated with every, virtually every stakeholder to make this road more durable. This road, as it is, the bad state of the road, is having adverse effects economically, health-wise, and socially on the psyche of the people in this community. This place has a kind of a social life in the night. But because the road is bad, many people are evacuating their, their businesses and every other thing. They are relocating to other places because the road is not motorable. So we want to also use this opportunity again to call on His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, to come to our aid in Odojo Road. We know that we know that he's a man of his promise. He will always keep his promise that before the end of this year, this road will be put in proper shape. But we hope that it will help us to facilitate and accelerate action so that this road will be put on in proper shape so that the motorists, the motorists, passengers, residents will give a sigh of relief. The commuters who often ply the road feel disconnected from the government and wonder why they pay taxes but can't enjoy the benefits. On this particular road called Mazamaza, 
Well, uh, I will say for the past five to ten years now, this is what we have been facing. But if you can see, just look at the road. You will see some blocks and the rest. This is constructed by the youth and then which the motor parks. They have to buy all these blocks and put it so that for the water to get dry. During rainy season, you cannot pass here. And then the way we suffer on this road, I, I keep on wondering, the taxes and the rest we, we are paying, where are they going to? So, but if the government cannot be able to do this road for us, let them just open up and say, okay, individuals should do the road and start collecting the tax. At least it will help us. If you go to other countries, you will see how people are doing. One person can decide to, okay, construct a better road for people to be passing. As far as we apply that road, you pay a better tax. Then you will enjoy your money. Why you, pay, when, you when you pay money and you will enjoy it, you will keep on paying. But if you are not enjoying your, your money, why will you pay? So, that's how it is. And then we are not happy on seeing this road like this. During the time of election, they will come outside and then start giving us one promises and the rest. After election, you will not see them. At the end of the day, they will go to their various houses and continue enjoying the wealth with their families and their children. Why we the masses that put them there will keep on suffering. In the rainy season, you cannot use your private car to pass this road. The only vehicle that pass here are trucks, containers and tankers. Uvokada cannot pass here during rainy season. So that is just the thing. So the best thing for them, for them to do is to do it now that it's dry season. Because you cannot work on the rainy season time. So in the next few months now, we will, we will get to rainy season. So we will continue our suffering again. The route is popular with transport businesses, some of whom have begun to leave Old Ojoa Road owing to its bad condition. Uh, this road has been like this for more than five years. No maintenance. You know, it's manageable now because of, because of this dry season. If it is rainy season, then it place a local area. A piece of government there to come and do the roads also. The road is too bad. Nothing is moving here. This place is off because of bad roads. So from here to uh, Alakija, Stroku, Abladot, it's off. It's because of this road, I, I, the transporters use express and it's causing hold up. This is my terminal there. But it's not moving. So. Even uh, Okada self doesn't even move well. We are talking less of uh, transport. Uh, transport. Others lament the impact of the road on the wear and tear of their vehicles. This is our road, don't spoil it well, well, don't your road. Uh, the, this road is the best of the road before. Eh? I take a beg on that. Eh? Oh, I will drive away there, yeah, the beg on that. Because if you buy motor like this, three months, all in legs don't spoil. We sell all now, now 8,000 naira. Before uh, the two weeks, three weeks, we don't buy another up. If you say uh, the road is okay, eh? this our motor is going to last more. I beg God to help on that. We don't say water pass, uh, plenty pass things. I beg. Eh? Men are going to help us for this road. God will bless on that. Traveling on Old Ojo Road is a sad experience, particularly during rush hours, when there's more vehicular and human traffic competing for space. In turn, man hours are lost. With shallow drains carrying stagnant waters, this difficulty is bound to increase. Residents are asking the Lagos State Government to respond to their SOS call speedily. If you care about your community, then you have a chance to contribute to its development. You could attract attention to the challenges in your environment by sending pictures and videos of what's happening around you to the eyewitness platform via the Channels TV app. Download it from any Play Store online. Here are some of the videos and pictures you sent in for the week. Five, four, three, two, one. We begin this segment of the program with this video of a road crash involving a fuel-laden tanker engulfed in fire. The eyewitness reported that the accident occurred at Ibafu on the outbound section of Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The reporter says emergency responders were immediately deployed to the scene 
and ensured that other vehicles maintain a far distance from the fire. Eyewitness videos from Delta State showing some people trying to put out a fire on a building located on Plymouth Road in Benin City, the Edo State capital. The building houses shops where electronics are sold and repaired. The eyewitness reports that nine shops were affected, but no death was recorded. According to the eyewitness, the fire started by a spark from an electric cable after it fell on the building at about 4 a.m. That's the program for this week. Thank you so much for being a part of it. See you same time next week. I am your me, Otaibi.